Ireland, right on the front row on the left there, right behind him, the defending title holder, Davy Evans, and the two Englishmen there, 88, Chris Griggs, and 88, Peter Grimer. Also in the race, we've got cars from Germany. There's uh, Carl Payson's in car number 96, which is a Scirocco. Most of the cars, as you can see, are Ford Escorts, but we've got one or two others. There's 230, uh, Peter Starr in an NSU. There's Jorgen Wakeman in another NSU. And from Belgium, we've got Hardy Oleson. He's the reigning Belgian champion in car number 24. Scotland is strongly recommend, uh, represented. Three cars there, 134, David Dugan, 140 gram weight, and 162, Malcolm Cheshire. And all the tracks in England, of course, make up the rest of the lineup. The green flag goes down, there's 75 laps to come for the Motorquip Hot Rods Championship of the World. Front row alongside Ormond Christie is the 95 car of uh, young Andrew Dance. It's the Irishman who goes straight into the lead in 9.62. 95, Andy Dance is second. Oh, and, and Andy Dance is already in trouble there. Hard against the safety fence. I don't quite know what happened there. He's obviously furious about that. He just seemed to drift wide as he went round the turn. He's now in the fence. Obviously, the car's backed up, and he is well and truly out of the race. The wide sweep of those big bends at this Vauxhall Heath Stadium at Ipswich as the cars come down at roughly 70 miles an hour going into these bends. It is still the Irishman who leads, 9.62, Ormond Christie, world champion in 1981, and hoping that he can get the gold roof back again. Barry Lee in there, 3.51 that you can see. Paul Grimer in number eight right behind him. And already, in fact, I can see that uh, in a moment, a lot of these leading cars are going to be catching up with some of the slower back markers. There's the Scirocco, the green one we just saw on the left there. The uh, Scirocco of the German, Karl Paysens, number 96, and he is already being lapped by the rest of the field. This is the man who's in second place, 156, Stu Jackson. And a lot of back markers now for, his to, for him to pick his way through. Well, the man who's still up front is here, 962, Ormond Christie. bunched in that main section of the field, occupying the fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh places. Barry Lee, at the moment, is somewhere about sixth or seventh. Still well in with the chance, because there's plenty of time to go. Racing in his new total livery. We've been used to seeing a bright orange car from Barry up to now, but uh, this is uh, a car that's had a repaint job. It's not a new car. Right alongside him, and indeed passing him now, number 19, Mick Duffy Collard, the guy who won it in 1980 had an enforced layoff of a year for suspension recently but he's back with a vengeance and now slowly but surely picking his way through this field here's the man they're all chasing Norman Christie and the second place man you can see there he is that's the gap between first and second the red car just coming into the picture a moment or two ago in second place round that bend that's first and second getting so far apart it's a job in fact to see them together and that's the way Ormond would want it Ah, there they are, first and second. One comes into the straight as the other goes out of it. 962, Ormond Christie, the leader. 156, Stu Jackson in second place. Number 19, Mick Collard, slowly but surely beginning to pick his way through some of the slower cars. Just going past 923, Kenny Cook and the Belgian champion, Hardy Oleson in the 24 car. Again, Mick Collard, a driver who's not afraid to go on the outside. It's no use sitting on the inside waiting for them to move over because very often they won't. 351, Barry Lee right behind Mick Collard in the 19 car, following him past. As Mick Collard moves up a couple more places. Distance now between Ormond Christie in 962 and Davy Evans in 932, who is third, is now almost half a lap. That's how much ground this guy has got to make up if he wants to get back on terms with his uh, fellow countrymen. 44 just going through the picture. That's Rob Burley from West Kingstown, just next to Brands Hatch. He's third in the national points chart of the PRI. A stock car racing, hot rod racing organisation. They race down at Arena, at Lydon, at Brands and at Crayford. And Rod's some way back down the field at the moment. Just tucked in behind him there, 717. That's Ross Rigger, who comes from Weymouth. The only car, in fact, today out there with uh, windows all the way round. And another escort. But, of course, the Irishmen have both chosen Toyotas. 
Norman Christie, the leader in 962, and Davy Evans are driving Toyotas. Davy Evans, in fact, had preferred a Chevette until recently, has just made the change to the Toyota Starlet. And in fact, uh, Davy Evans is going to be under a lot of pressure in a minute. 156, still holding second place, but the scrap is now developing for the third place. 932 is there, but right on his rear bumper is the 88 car of Peter Grimer. There he is, desperate to go by, looking for a gap now. Now, are we going to see Peter Grimer try to make a move and get past the Irishman? I know it's a long race, but you can't be getting past as early as possible. It leaves you much more time for other eventualities that may occur. This is the scrap now for the third place, 9.32. Reigning world champion, Davy Evans, from 88, Peter Grimer. Here's Stu Jackson in uh, 156, going past the 44 Lord Burley car. In fact, there's first and second, you can see. Stu Jackson really putting the pressure on now. I think he senses that uh, while Ormond is likely to be getting held up, that's his opportunity to close up and put some pressure on him in the hope that he might make a mistake. Just one back marker separating the leader there from the second man. That's the man who's chasing him. And so it's still 9.62. Norman Christie, 156 to Jackson. Further back, it's uh, 9.32, Davey Evans, 88, Peter Grimer, 2.42, Pete Stevens. 19, Mick Collard, who's now beginning to leave Barry Lee behind in 3.51. And then it's 88, Chris Griggs, behind him, number 8, Paul Grimer. Then number 16, Steve Dance, 3.06, George Polly. And indeed, we're back to the leader again. And now we've got the ironical situation of just in front of this man. You'll see as they come round the bend, there is George Polly, the outsider, the leading of those two cars. George Polly, who won this world final in 1976, who has now just been lapped by Ormond Christie, the 1981 champion, and the man who, at the moment, anyway, is looking very likely to become the 1983 champion. So, a sad day for George Polly, now being lapped by the lead car. Stu Jackson still well there in second place, picking off the slower cars one at a time, the 140 car there of uh, Graham Waite from Edinburgh currently top of the national points in Scotland, but that's not counting for anything out here on this Ipswich Raceway today. So 156, Stu Jackson still second. So we've seen the first and second. This is the man still battling away for third place. In fact, he's opened a gap of about 30 yards now on the fourth place man, which is still the 88 car of uh, Peter Grimer. The blue flag you may have seen just waving there is a signal to the slower backmarker cars to move over and let the leaders that are competing for the places come through. There's 156. Stu Jackson just got himself ahead of the 306 backmarker, George Polly. The long straights and the wide bends here really do allow these cars to produce their maximum performance. They're all powered by the early Ford pushrod engine, the Escortina, the Escortina. 1700cc roughly is the limit. No overhead camshafts are allowed, no superchargers are allowed. But apart from that, the drivers can and do spend a lot of money. Probably the engine under the bonnet of that 351 Barry Lee car has probably stood him or his sponsors in for, I don't know, 4,000, 5,000 pounds. But Barry Lee not having too much success at the moment. He's fairly well down the field today. He's won this championship four times previously in 1973, in 1974, and then again in 77 and 78. This is the man who is in second place, 156. Stu Jackson from Hensford near Brown Hills, just north of Birmingham. He was, in fact, runner-up last year, but the man that he was runner-up to, of course, was now, is now third, and that is 9.32, Davy Evans. So those places look like being reversed if they stay now for the remaining laps. 
Pete Stevens occupying fourth place at the moment. He's slowly been working his way up, but I don't think he's really got the speed or the power. He's the uh, 1982 European champion, national champion, and English champion. So he certainly knows his way around. Time is running out. The jagged flag is at the ready. They're coming around the turn for the final time. It's going to be Ormond Christie again. That's the jagged flag, and Northern Ireland have taken it again. A fantastic performance. In second place, it's going to be 156 Stu Jackson. Third will be 932. Then 242. Pete Stevens, 19 Mick Pollard, 88. Peter Grimer, 351 Barry Lee, but they're all a long way back, and this packed crowd have really seen a terrific race and an outstanding win from this man here. He carried off the title all against the odds in 1981, and he's done it again in 1983. The new champion of the world, 962, Ormond Christie.